you watched Wonder Vision at all? <laughs> Not yet. I've watched everything but the last episode, which is just annoying. But why? Due to lack of download? No, no, no. It was just you know when you like you get to, it's like that time of the night when you usually go to bed, and there's like one more episode, and you're like, should I push it and regret it? Tomorrow, or should I just go to sleep? And I chose sleep, so... And <laughs> you just haven't finished it now. Mm, so... But it's actually not a bad series, dude. It's one of the things I wanted to talk about that I've watched recently. Okay. Um, it, it's it's super different direction. It does go more typical marvel like, towards the towards the end. More typical but, marvel how? No, you know, like the... I don't know how to explain. Like, the Marvel formula of, like, the, the superpowers and then battling and... But in the beginning, like I'm sure you've heard, they go through this whole weird like sitcom-y sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So and she's in almost like a... What was that movie with Jim Carrey where he was in that bubble and... Uh, oh, Truman Show. Truman Show. So it's mm. almost like 50s set Truman-ish show and slight incongruencies that let you know that it's not really reality yeah. and shit. But and then yeah. reality unravels, apparently. Yeah, especially so. around her kids and stuff. Yeah, so I don't want to give too much away, but they, they did some some really cool stuff because, like, because they're like playing off that, you know, it's her chaos magic that's mm. kind of, like, doing this or whatever. The the sword team outside are kind of, like, because it's all frequencies and magic and stuff, they can tune into her thing, and she's actually creating a TV show that they can watch, oh, which okay. is pretty weird. So, like, sword are watching the same show we watching, I don't know if that makes It's pretty meta like that. So okay. you're seeing on the screen, like, Scarlet Witch and Vision, like, in their little, like, black and white TV thing being, like, ha, 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 And, like, the audience going, ha, 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 in the background, like, sitcom and Okay. But what's really funny is at one point, spoiler alerts if anyone, but um, she opens the door because she th- vaguely mentions her brother within the Marvel Universe that died, Pietro. Yes. But then opens the door and, I, man, I'm bad with the actor's name. Evan Peters. But Evan Peters is like, hey there, I'm your... And even, so... I don't know if you remember in uh, what movie it was where that, that that chick from Two Broke Girls is in the... She's like... Kat Dennings. Yeah, I think she's like in is Thor or something. Yeah, she's in the first So now she's Thors. she's part of the... She's been called in as a specialist and she's like, did they just recast... Um, did Wanda just recast her brother? Like, and it's <laughs> So it's like that fourth wall kind of like... Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's a few things that they did that was really funny. Um, mm. That was cool. But So in general, I enjoyed the show, but you do have to give it like... Because, yeah. you know, there are people like us that, like, know a little bit about, it, like, or you know a lot, but with House of M and all that. So you understand right from the beginning, like, okay, then something's up. But I can understand for, the, like, the first other person because mm. each episode goes through, like, a an, an iconic age of TV. So it's, like, starts 50s and then becomes 60s, 70s. Okay. And then, like, even they have the aspect ratio that changes, oh, like, wow. over time. And, like, and then the color starts. Intri- and then it's very modern family, you know, where they interview and, like. Oh, yeah, sh- sitting on like, a couch and. Having yeah, and, they do, and even okay. Vision's, like, sitting there. like, And he's, like, he doesn't <laughs> understand what's going on. And, like, oh, no, so it's, it's, okay. it's done really well in that, like, mock-up sort of, like, um, thing. So I think Ooh. it was a very smart show. Um, I don't know how it ends yet. I will. Uh, I think I've heard one or two things, um, i.e. kind of like a return of Vision now, um, the way they've done things, mm. and, and, and it's similar to in the comics. One uh, thing one I can that. tell you, though, is that, I mean, it's, it's pretty apparent, apparent. I knew it from the beginning. Obviously, someone like Kira was like, what's going on? But um, they cast Agatha Hartness, or whatever her name is, that witch, mm. um, and she's actually the kind of villain. She's controlling, so she's screwing with oh, okay. Scarlet... Um, which is brain, mm. but it's obviously Scarlet, which is magic that's doing it. But and then yeah, like they they take it back and like the whole witch and this and that and it's. But what they're saying is they're going to bring. That's how they think it's going to tie Doctor Strange to is is that it's actually chaos that they're going to have to fight. Um, what's his name? I don't know. It's the, like this. This is where my Marvel thing goes. I didn't know there was a chaos dude. I know in DC they've got chaos magic is heavily prevalent. Mm. Um, especially with um, Dr. Fate and going against all the Lords of Chaos and stuff yeah. like that. So I know DC does it heavily. I, I was never really an Avengers I, fan, no, I'll be honest with I'll you. I'll put up the, the dude's comics. name, but it's a big bad dude, Like, which is like more of a Doctor Strange villain, but they're going to say what she's done has had ripple effects on... Okay. And he's going to have to get involved. And So it, it's Interesting. sounds all cool. Yeah. All uh, look, I, it's not like I'm not going to watch it. It's mm. just... Getting around to it and and I don't know just what has been available for me has almost taken over yeah. from having to actively go out and find 
um, on the same note, you know, we were talking earlier that I've started watching the Invincible mm. cartoon show on Amazon. And that's just because I have Amazon Prime and it's there. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, <laughs> rather than have to, <coughs> excuse me, find streams or torrents or whatever, there it is. It's, it's so. funny you say that because it, it happens so often because like you told me to watch Love and Monsters and I literally went, I downloaded it and forgot about it. And now <laughs> it's coming out on Netflix and I, the more than likely will now... We'll be sitting one day, it'll come up with this little trailer and we'll be like, okay, watch. Let's watch this show, yeah. Even though it's like somewhere in my downloads. More convenience than anything else. And dude, I gotta say, like that show, I recommend to anybody, any of our viewers watching if you can, if you have Amazon Prime or mm. get hold of episodes, it's worth the watch. Uh, I don't know the comics. I haven't read them. Um, it's Robert Kirkman. Yeah. It, it was actually the... F- he did it's like pre-Walking Dead, things. yeah. yeah. So he did with something called Wolfman before that, and then Wolfman didn't take off. Then he did um, Invincible, and Invincible also a slow start. And as the comic went on, it gained popularity amongst the fans and all of that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And as it was starting to get popular, The Walking Dead dropped and mm-hmm. had a similar thing where it took about six to ten issues in before people started talking about The Walking Dead and going, Jesus, you need to be reading this flipping mm. comic. Um, and at one stage, yeah, he had the two biggest comics in Image with Invincible and The Walking Makes Dead. Sense, yeah. And it was just mostly when The Walking Dead became a TV show that it just catapulted mm. past Invincible and left it in its wake kind of thing. Um, but, I mean, dude, the guy had a 150 run in the comics on Invincible. I mean, that's not a yeah. small showing by any standards. Um, a decent comic. It's 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 great because it does follow a lot of DC-ish kind of canon. Actually, both houses. But there is a Justice League equivalent mm. there. There is a, a detective who's very much like a mixture of probably Etrigan and um, Hellboy okay. mixed in one. And actually they got Ron Perlman to do the voice. Oh, hectic. Okay. So it's just like, <laughs> what a fucking cool character. So that's there. Um, they've got, yeah, various other super teams. The main, main guy, Omni-Man, he's like their Superman. And it's actually the guy who plays J. Jonah Jameson in Spider-Man. Okay. That old dude, I just forget his name right now, but hmm. he's Omni-Man, the voice of. And it's kind of like his son is has genes of a human and his. Okay. And his powers suddenly do manifest. And it's all about getting his kid up to speed and teaching him how to use the powers, how okay. they work. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. And stuff's happening while this is going down. So it's it's good, man, and it's fucking nice. brutal. Like, okay. yeah, like, it's not your normal Justice League. It's like, yeah, more like when the fight scenes happen, almost like the authority fighting guys, like okay. breaking arms and crushing skulls if they have to, and brutal, nice. brutal, but good. Like, very, I'm enjoying it. Like, so much so that I do want to pick up trades or omnis of invincible and just give it a read see i'm hearing that it's following the comics quite closely nice um and, and it, I, I find that weird because apparently now there's a small fan backlash that that are criticizing the show because it's following the comics <laughs> I'm going like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? It's like, <laughs> when they don't follow the comics, people fucking are in uproar. When a show yeah. comes along that does follow the comics, people are in fucking uproar. Oh, you should try and deviate a little bit. People are addicted to drama, dude. It's just, it's what it is. Fuck it. It just baffles me, dude. Blows my yeah. mind. But overall, animation-wise, top-notch. Voice nice. voice casting. Dude, it's, it's every time there's a new character and I see you like either you recognize the voice or you actually see who's playing it dude the list goes on and on I think I had a I can just rattle off some names for you here um no those are my Snyder cut notes we'll get there (laughs) (laughs) uh no I didn't make notes of specific guys I just made a note like voice acting is bang on but yeah um it's a good show it's it's definitely worth a watch for some people that, that are looking for something new um I think they did the first three episodes at once and now it looks like weekly a new app is dropping um okay. uh, works for some people doesn't work for me i guess I don't know. <laughs> it's weird it's it's uh, i'm uh, yeah so i've watched the first three or four and now i can see there's at least one or two more apps up and i just 
part of me is going, no, I want a little bit more because it's like 20, 30 minute episode. So I want a bit more to it. Yeah, Netflix I... has created a spoiled sort of like, mm. like the, the whole binge sort of era. And even in that, the first, I don't know, it was a couple of years ago where it was like binging stuff was, was, was okay for me, where I could take a Saturday, start watching in the morning and go all through into the evening on a show. Now I find that like I can't do that. I can't mm. binge a full show like I used to. It's, it's, I get bored, distracted, or sometimes it's just, I don't know. I, yeah, just a full day's dedication to a certain thing doesn't always work for me anymore yeah. like it used to. And I noticed that for the first time with the recent Lucifer season. Just couldn't... Yeah, but that also, we chatted yeah. about that. That wasn't the greatest. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and, and that's why I was, you know, in two minds about reusing it as a <laughs> reference point. But, yeah, I mean, I just found my, my binge ability is also kind of mm. depleted a little bit um, okay. compared to what it used to be. So, yeah, I think if it gets another three or four more eps, I'll probably bang all those and then wait a bit and then hit another stint or something like that. But it is definitely worth watching. Okay. Yeah, dude, I don't know if it's... Time wise, but um, I watched Mortal Kombat last night. Mm. So, a little bit Mortal of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> so, a little bit of context. Does like, it still have the cool theme song right there. It did. It? They remixed it a little bit hardcore. So it's a little bit more inch, inch now. Like, okay. but, I don't know, but the voice is still there and everything, which is cool. Oh, okay. So, dude, like, so for, I know you know, but for anyone who doesn't know, like, I can't claim to be the biggest Mortal Kombat fan, but I was one of those kids when I was like, mm. when I was in like, school i used to pretend fight with my friends and i was we picked characters and like so i'm i've like i've loved mortal kombat my whole yeah. life you know like so and i i went in with no expectations but okay and i heard once or twice but funny enough i forgot going in that apparently james one was involved in mortal kombat oh, okay. which i was like what okay so the, Again, like I had did you get a sense of it in the horror dark mm -mm. anything like that oh, okay. it, it you know like but and, and I, the reason I'm saying all this is because, you know, I don't know if you're the same, but you go into some movies like like rooting for it. You really want to believe in it. Like, mm. so if ever, like even if everyone else is like, <laughs> like, eh, you like, so you want to give the film a chance. And yeah. I, I went in with that. And, you know, obviously someone like Kira went in with no expectations. And sure. it starts off not bad, like, you know, like how you kind of expect it to start, like, and so they lay all the groundwork that there's this in their, and... in their own way. But now, this is I want to say, which is weird because I watched the trailers, and the trailers they physically are in like Mortal Kombat, like the tournament, you see the hall and everything. I don't know if you've seen that, that's all yeah. flashes and bits and pieces. And there's no Raiden assembles the guys again, or at least that was my assumption from the trailer, yeah. Um, but there's no actual Mortal Kombat in the film, I'm like, like. It, it, and this is going to like throw you off, but, and I'm maybe jumping there too quickly, but so let me try round it up like pros, like the fighting and the visual effects. Awesome. It's exactly what you expect from all combat. It's like, dude, it's, it's gruesome. There's this one scene where like Kung Lao does this thing where it's like, he throws his like hat and mm. spinning and he drives someone's head and whole body through oh, nice. like, it, it, but then they try this thing where they like, the guy like has a side thing. He's like vitality. And it's like, no, it's it's just <laughs> like no, it's cheesy. Or, or no, in that thing, he's like flawless victory. And it, there's some characters that were so good, but some characters that felt like really bad ripoffs of themselves. Ah, okay, nice catch there. We just lost a power cable, but it's fine. Um, mm. and I don't know how else to explain it, but like like Liu Kang, like he was in there, and you know Liu Kang is the the Boy Scout, the follow like Raiden, yeah, but he was cheesy, like good, like you know, like he was, he's again, he's fire and everything, super cool. There's one thing where it's like this whole dragon, yeah, yeah. that was one of his fate animalities at one yeah. point, yeah, and in one of the games. So, like, okay, so again, let me try stick. So, fighting and like powers and all that, awesome, but mm. like, and some of the characters, really good, like. Like Jax was really cool. Typical military, like special forces. Him and Sonya yeah. come to the thing, and and when he does, like they they changed a few things up. Like again, his arms get ripped off by Sub Zero, um, yeah, which that was always a Goro, Goro thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they changed a lot, dude. Um, okay. And 
They re- are the ninjas in there, the Lin Kuei and the other so side. So the, the biggest, other the whole story revolves around Scorpion and Sub Zero. Now that's something I also want to get because even as a sub, you know me, dude. Like yeah. Sub Zero is my favorite character, but like he's portrayed as the bad guy in the the thing for some reason. And Lin Kuei have always generally been peaceful, as far as I know. Hmm. Some maybe I've missed somewhere, but like he's so so strong. He's like the main ninja in the series, and I'm like I'm talking about like. Like, at a stage, like, there's two or three other, like, Earth realm people trying to fight him. And I'm like, no, but he's strong, but he's not. Yeah, he's not all that. I mean. Like, to a, so it, it opens up with Lin Kuei coming and you don't know who they are. But if you know Mortal Kombat, you know. And it's Hanzo, which is, you know, it's Scorpion at mm. the time with his family. And Sub-Zero comes and the Lin Kuei come and, like, beat the shit out of everyone and kill his whole family. And he gets angry. And he, he quite easily, like, and he's got his powers. He's got his ice powers already, but. Scorpion doesn't. Scorpion's just like got a chain. Yeah, because Scorpion makes a, de- a deal with yeah. whomever he, wherever he goes to come back mm. with that demonic ability of his. Yeah, and allows him to teleport and shoot yeah, fire. and have fire yeah. and stuff. And 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 it does have that in some. He does come back in some instances and or in some instance, but like it's just like I don't know, man. Like Sub Zero is like working for Shang Tsung, and Shang Tsung is like I don't. know. Man, I'm trying to like keep direction here, but let me try. So again, pros like Kano out of all things. So you pick mm. up like it's th- this is crux of the story that I'm missing. But anyway, I'm gonna just finish my thought. <laughs> but Kano's typical Australian funny. He's got very current humor, and like he's you, they play him as this hardcore dude who has also hasn't a lot of them haven't gotten their powers yet, um, mm. and he's like. Um, when I don't know who he sees first, I think it's Sub Zero's ice and stuff, and he's like, he's like, yo, show me that Houdini shit, and you know, he's got oh, he's got these funny wise cracks and stuff, and he's mm. he's one of those, you know, he's a bad guy, but you kind of like him anyway. He's very likable, mm. um, and so they, and again, Jack's also typical special forces. Sonya Blade, not bad at all, um, but so I'm gonna rewind now. And I know this is a bit confusing, <laughs> but it all opens up with this one random dude, so who is like a, a cage fighter or whatever, and he gets like the shit kicked out of him the whole time, but he was born with a Mortal Kombat scar, you know, like, oh, and God. everyone who's chosen fighters has the scar, but it comes straight after they show you. So what happens is Sub-Zero, again, it's like 1916, and Sub-Zero kills Scorpion's mm. whole family. He kills him, and there's one little baby left. And then Raiden just magically, like lightning strikes in, also really cheesy i just don't understand how they didn't go the the old wise man sort of approach with raiden it's like this young random japanese dude and his eyes are white but it looks really bad like uh, like i i think it will make you cringe so hard because i know you like raiden's one of your favorites yeah and i mean even when christopher lambert was playing him like a french speaking dude <laughs> he kind of played that mentor with the, yeah. with the long hair it was yeah and those moments where with even special effects back then that were cheesy mm. even the way they did his eyes with the lightning coming it was out. cool yeah. yeah this was terrible like the actual lightning and stuff again very cool but i don't know it just doesn't look right man so <laughs> I mean, and i'll try and maybe put up like visuals or photos or whatever but yeah um anyway he takes the baby so then it goes straight to this unknown dude that you know and any flipping person with a half brain i don't know if like this is what already annoyed me about the story is like Okay, so you like you know it was nineteen whatever, but you know this dude has a scar, so he's one of Scorpion's ancestors. Like, it's 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 not even a surprise. Yeah. But they try to play it out like, oh, you must be like, and he's having flashes of Scorpion. Like to me, so that's already something they could have done different. Is hit that and have that as a aha reveal at the end. Yeah. Okay. So he's now you got an unknown character that's not in the Mortal Kombat games. That's now in the the story is centered around and and Shang Tsung's trying to come yeah. kill all, all Earth's protectors before the com- mortal, actual Mortal Kombat starts because it's one of those if they lose one more then Ada um, Netherrealm yeah. can come take Invade. Earth yeah that was always the original yeah. sort of premise but and, and then, then that, if I remember the games because we won the last time then uh, not Shang Tsung Shinnok uh, um, no Shinnok was Quan Chi no it was uh, with the horns in that um, I'll tell you his and name the hammer. Uh, the hammer yeah um Shao Kahn. Shao Kahn. So the way I remember the canon of the games is because we won and defended ourselves so many times in a row, he breaks the rules of Mortal Kombat and invades Earth anyway. 
Mm. And that's what brings in the ancestors to come in and try and stop things and reverse. And they granted, in the games, they granted Raiden more power yeah. to stop this invasion. And then, yeah. I once watched an entire YouTube video that literally documented <laughs> the whole history of Mortal Kombat from all of the games to kind of show you that it was just this ongoing story thread. And it's actually mind blowing yeah. if you played them all. Sorry, carry on. No, I'm trying to also, because I know I'm going to go over time if I, like, I'm trying to wrap up my thoughts, but... Okay, so it's pre-tournament. Yeah, and so... Because that was another question I was going to ask you. If, if there's no Mortal Kombat tournament, where is all the fighting coming from? So, so and then what happens is, is now, obviously, Shang Tsung's trying to play dirty, and then they, like... But then, like, Sonya Blade and Jax now have discovered the symbol, and she doesn't have one, but Jax does, and they're trying to, and they've figured out if you kill someone in Mortal Kombat, you, it transfers to you, and you become like a chosen fighter. But obviously, Mr. Chosen One was born with it because he's got heritage and uh, the whole... But So they find him, and now they're gonna, they have to go on like a... And Kano knows where to find Raiden conveniently, so they go... <laughs> and whilst, whilst and they like do this huge thing into like desert mountains and whatever, and also it happens very quickly, but at the same time, because while um, Sub-Zero is chasing them, Jax is like, I'll stay behind, just go, go to the checkpoint or whatever, and he gets his arms ripped off. Okay. So then you go there and like Liu Kang just appears out of nowhere, like in the in the sand. He's like, I've been expecting you. I, we've been gathering Earth's warriors. And then like they get long story short, they get to the temple and Jax is there and they're busy like trying to like build these arms. I'm like, wait, so if you could pick Jax up, why don't you just go pick everyone else up? Like, what? <laughs> Earth is at stake here. Like, like what? And and also like uh -huh. Raiden's just not getting involved. Raiden's like this stubborn, like, and then like they all they'll be like, we we Earth's warriors. And he's like, you all pathetic. And like, now to me. And please jump in here, but like it was always everyone else that was so pessimistic, and it's like, and Raiden was like the like, you know, if we just believe, yeah, it was the other way around, dude. They like, well, let's try a fight, and he's like, you're all pathetic, leave, kind of thing, like, and it was bad, like mean or whatever. Okay, yeah, and then and then he they, was always the one who held hope, no matter how many yeah. fighters were lost or whatever. He just had faith in Liu Kang, the Kung Laos, all of them that they would. Defenders. Dude, and it's like, and then, and then they basically find a way to segregate the people and like, and take the fight like you know to them or whatever. But not Mortal Kombat, but that's where there's so much fighting. Um, and again, the fighting scenes are amazing. But and then it ends with a, like a cliffhanger, and this is like, I don't even know if you want to call it a cliffhanger, but they're like, okay, you know, they kind of like hold um, Shang Tsung for a while now. So now we must go find all the other fighters. And then, like, the guy's back in the boxing gym, and he's and he's like, yeah. And they're like, where are you going now? And he's like, Hollywood. And you see, like, a Johnny Cage sign in the background. Wow. And the movie ends there. And it's like... <laughs> so you know there's going to be a sequel, but, like... I don't know. <laughs> Off the back of your review here, I'm not going to go out and watch it. I'm going to wait for a downloadable version so that I can just... What's so angry, like... In, like that's there, there is moments like Cabal out of all people's in it and he's really cool I don't know if you remember Cabal he's like the guy with like this almost like Darth Vader mask and he's got these hooks that he oh, yes, yes, and he's yes, yes, like yes, really yeah. fast and I remember what in the game he was actually Sub-Zero's brother that died and got reanimated it's possible that so many of the ninjas are like yeah. each other's if I remember the story he's actually the brother that's reanimated yeah and and Goro's in the and Goro's cool, but Goro gets killed. So, but the, but they they Shang Tsung drops this line that like basically says he hints at that he can resurrect them. Um, Kung Lao does die, and Shang Tsung takes his soul, which is the, one of the you know, like oh, okay. It, it, and then obviously Sonya eventually she kills Kano and gets her little like thing, and then instantly gets her magic and. Oh, but okay. like. <sighs> It's, yeah, it's you, you irritating it's so because, <laughs> but again, the scenes where Sub Zero and, and there is some. So this goes back to the I went in rooting for the film. There is some things that are cheesy, like when Scorpion does appear and he's like, "Get over here!" Mm. And it's like an inch cheesy, but it's like it's still like fuck yeah because you like the game, you like yeah. you know it's his thing, and you can forgive it, but it still works. Like, but this, yeah. It's tricky, dude. Like, and I so badly want to love the film, and like to me, the music choice is like bad. Um, <laughs> but the it, helps. It, it it it's it feels like a, a disjointed movie, and like some of the casting to me is so good, and like this is gonna, and I mean this with the biggest respect, but all the American, Australian, and English actors are actually quite strong but all the asian chinese actors mm. which was a big part of Mortal combat they were the like cheesy ones mm. like 
and I don't know why. Like it's it, and it's, it was like it was like over the top performances and like I don't know, man. Like uh, I don't know if it's just bad casting or what it is, but it's just, it's just sounding like bad storytelling to me as well. Mm. Just by on the back of what you're saying here, yeah, it's just yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it sounds and, like and, an idea and a, an experiment that's failed. Like, and just just to give you some context, like something that I was like, how can you just play it off like that? Because now Shang Tsung's trying to invade, and it's against the Earth, mm. the, the principles. And and Raiden does say that he puts this electric wall thingy against force field against them that doesn't let them temporarily. Um, and then Kano betrays them, so like, which is surprise, surprise. Like, mm. but Shang Tsung is like, yeah, in the you know, the older gods are too lazy to interfere. I'm like, well, say what? So that's <laughs> like, that's the like, just, okay, okay. So we've gotten rid of the, the older gods problem. That They're just too lazy to interfere yeah. with like the biggest rules on the planet. Like, I'm like, yeah, mm. I don't, don't buy that. Like what? <laughs> it's so confusing. <laughs> Melina, isn't it? Um, Kira thought she was cheesy, but I thought she was pretty cool. Like, with her, like she's permanently got a bit of a thing. And when she got really angry, her whole mouth started okay. like opening. So okay. again, like the, oh, but, and, as usual, like the 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 like the unknown character takes the longest to form his powers. So it's like he's so useless until the and then he like when he does, he's scorpions like and he just gets like this weird hardened skin. Like he looks like he's got an Aquaman suit on and like forms like these like knife weapons and that's him, dude. And, like it absorbs energy. I'm like, so you basically got a glorified vibranium suit like <laughs> kind of thing. Like <laughs> we've seen this movie already. <laughs> Chadwick was way better. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like this chosen one. I'm like that's it. Like maybe they're gonna explore it more in the second movie. But I'm like, I was so whelmed, dude. And mm. I, like I really wanted to be badass. Like sorry, dude. It's out, I can see it. Just as you're explaining, <laughs> as you're unpacking. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> and I could say like an hour more probably, but. I shouldn't. I should just let it go. <laughs> yeah, we probably should. We have to do a part two when I finally get to watch it again. <laughs> yeah, no. You can relive the horror all over. 